Now, ChannelsTV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash Channels Web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Now we have some pictures that were sent in to us and let's share them with you. We can begin with this picture of waste in front of a government secondary school in Nasarawa State. Our eyewitness reporter says this act can have a negative health consequence on the students and wants the school authorities to sort it out. The next picture is from the Oshodi area of Lagos State showing a police officer talking to some people. Our eyewitness reporter alleges that the officer was trying to extort money from the people and wants the government to do more to rid the force of such corrupt men. We end with this picture showing a transformer in Wumba district, Apo Abuja. Our eyewitness reporter claims the cable connected to the transformer has been disconnected and stolen, leaving the residents in darkness. He's asking the electricity distribution company in the area to respond to their plight. Thanks for all the pictures that you sent in. Send us some more when you can. Today, March the 23rd, is the deadline given by President Muhammadu Buhari to government ministries, departments and agencies to submit details of their 2018 budget estimates to the National Assembly. Well, the directive came after the President held a meeting with the leadership of the National Assembly at the villa in Abuja. Our correspondent Linda Akigwe examines the tension between the Executive and the National Assembly over the 2018 budget. The Executive and the National Assembly are using billboards and banners to send jabs at each other over the 2018 budget. These billboards have been popping up along the three arms zone in the Federal Capital Territory and have been out for nearly one week. The National Assembly is hanging the budget delay on the neck of government ministries, departments and agencies over their failure to submit details of their budgets to relevant committees in both chambers. Past it has as well should ensure that they do not also cause any delay because we're not going to pass the general budget without the budget of the parastators because we gave them a deadline also for the parastators to make sure that they've submitted their, their, their budget. Anything that doesn't come by end of the day, the subcommittees should just complete the exercise and work with whatever they have. I think I rule on that as that's the position of the Senate. Thank you. President Mohamed Buhari has intervened, giving MDAs a deadline of Friday, March 23rd, to submit details of their budget estimate to the National Assembly. Channels Television spoke on telephone with the chairman, Senate Committee on Primary Health, Senator Mao Onwabunwa, who confirms that the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and the NHIS have not met this deadline given by the president. He, however, says the committee has given both agencies until Tuesday, March 27th, to submit their budget proposals. In the meantime, the National Assembly has announced a date when the budget will be passed. We have um, proposing that we're laying the budget finally on the 19th of April 2018. And hopefully we'll be passing the budget on the 24th of April 2018 is the harmonized calendar with the Senate. President Buhari laid the 2018 budget before a joint session of the National Assembly on November 7th, 2017. He appealed to the National Assembly to pass the budget by December 2017 to return the country to a one-year budget cycle of January to December instead of the current practice where budget lifespan continues to the middle of the year. However, as it stands, this plan by the executive to return Nigeria to a one-year budget cycle has been completely derailed as a result of the lack of enthusiasm exhibited by the National Assembly, who perhaps did not key into this plan in the first place, and also the unwillingness by the executive to take actions to actualize this plan. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. Now let's take another look at the issues surrounding this delay. Joining me from our studios in Abuja is a public affairs analyst, Izen Wangu. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you. Good evening.
Now, why do you think you had to take the president giving a deadline for the MDAs to submit their budgets? And even now, some agencies still haven't complied. What do you think is going on? What we're dealing with uh, is inexcusable. I, I think we've, we've not come out of uh, the era of impunity and, um, and arrogance. In, from the executive, and that's something we carried over from, from the military. Uh, it's, it's just not uh, excusable that the, even the president will perfunctorily instruct the ADA. Why do you have to instruct people to obey the law? It's called appropriation law. Uh, so the, the challenge here is that we've continued with this recklessness in, in the way we deal with what affects the lives and the well-being of our citizens. Um, incidentally, what has happened is that uh, the, the executive wants to pitch the National Assembly against the Nigerian people, and they have created these emergencies deliberately. So what needs to happen is that this fight of the two elephants uh, will not benefit the grass in any way. And, and I think we need to put the pressure as citizens on both the executive and the National Assembly to get, by, get past whatever it is the challenge is. Uh, we know that the reputational challenge that the National Assembly has has not put them in a good stead uh, to be able to have the sympathy of the people. But in this particular case, uh, where instructions have to be given for MDAs to go defend their budget is, is, is indeed an abuse of process. And but I think, think we need to speak up on that and put the blame squarely where it should be. Do you think that's really what the executive is trying to do by giving this deadline? Because you see the Senate Committee on Primary Health giving the NHIS, for instance, up to Tuesday next week to submit their, you know, their proposal as they fail to meet today's deadline. Now, is that the best way to deal with the seeming flouting of the executive's order? What can they really do? They, the, the best they can do is to make a resolution that would be also ignored. Uh, because the, uh, the Constitution has no punitive sanctions against uh, the breaking of uh, appropriation law. And you know that this appropriation law is just a one-year cycle kind of law. It's not a law that is, uh, that is in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So it needs to, the pressure needs to come from citizens to get the executives to get off this rascality and, and arrogance that we continue to see and push to see that they obey the National Assembly, especially when it has to do with the well-being of, of all of us. But speaking about the well-being of all of us, the administration had promised to return the country to a one-year budget cycle. Even in terms of M implementation of the budget, is this still feasible, seeing as we're, as, as we're still think, go, going back and forwards, backwards and forwards? I beg no, your pardon. It's, 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 no, that's not happening now. We, we've already fallen short of that. And... What has happened in our country is that there is no sanction for lack of political will. We always talk about political will, but when people derelict on that, there is no, no punishment for lack of political will. And, and we can't go back to any one-year cycle. This is, the budget, according to uh, Mr. Dugara, will be, will be passed sometime in April. And that's four months, clearly four months after the president has said he would want this budget passed. And... The responsibility to do that was on the MDAs who, uh, for whatever reason, and if they had any challenge in terms of perhaps underhand dealings by the, the National Assembly, they should have spoken up. We've seen that happen before. Nasser El Rufai had confronted them at a point in time, openly in their own court. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Arumote do the same thing with uh, uh, the, the, the committee that him beheaded in the, in the House of Representatives. So whatever the issues are, it should be put on the table so that citizens can understand whether there are challenges, whether there are people who are, are pushing behind the scene uh, that, and they don't want to do that. But they need to confront whatever it is openly. Right, it's just not excusable to break the law. And it's called appropriation law. And there's, there's just no excuse, really. All right, Public Affairs Analyst is in Wangwango. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Let's take a look at health issues now. Bauchi State has continued to record more cases of cholera as the disease has now spread to four local government areas of the state. The outbreak is in its fourth week with over 300 cases recorded and nine persons confirmed dead, including a 22-year-old student of the College of Education.
The Commissioner of Health, Dr. Zerua Hassan, is concerned about the practice of open excretion, which she says is a contributory factor to the spread of the disease, in addition to non-observance of personal hygiene, among many. The state is also battling with Lassa fever, which has so far claimed five lives. All right, now let's cross over to Abuja, and here's Linda Akigwe. Linda? Hello, Ijoman. Hey. Hope you had a great day. Good yes, to I see did. you. The federal government wants states and the private sector to lend support and take advantage of a national homegrown school feeding program. The secretary to the government of the federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, says the program, which was part of government's campaign promise, is successfully feeding over... 7.4 million pupils in 22 states across the Federation. He was speaking at a symposium on homegrown school feeding in honor of the African Day of School Feeding at the State House. Our correspondent Gloria Omezuki reports. Growing up, many children from poor families are very familiar with hunger. About 30% of children in Nigeria are malnourished, according to statistics from UNICEF. In a bid to change this dangerous trend among children, the federal government began homegrown school feeding program currently running in 22 states. Nigeria is among other African countries like Kenya running a school feeding program. We must strengthen the commitment of the arms of government to this program. The executive arm of government remains committed to always improving the quality and quantity of homegrown school feeding. The legislative arm must keep supporting the effort in terms of appropriation and other forms of support. At a symposium to mark the African Day of School Feeding, the Minister of Agriculture joined a panel discussion to chart a way forward for the program. And this thing costs us about 10 billion a month. That's not cheap. It's not that Nigeria can't afford it, but because there are many competing priorities. But it has to be done. And definitely has to be upscaled. So what do we do? We are pleading with every Nigerian that there is need for us to pay tax. The federal government budgets 70 naira a meal for each child in primaries 1 to 3 from poor communities, this has apparently encouraged school attendance. Very happy because the food is very nice. I like rice and beans and egg because it used to give me energy and I used to listen to my teacher. Now the vice president clearly puts it this way, when we invest in our children, we invest in ourselves and in the future. Now the key concern remains how truly sustainable is the homegrown school feeding program in the long run to guarantee a successful future for the Nigerian child. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News.